Hey guys, Nikki here, and today I'm going to show you three exercises that you can do to improve your hip mobility. Stay tuned. All right, so just first real quick, why might we want to work on our hip mobility? Well, if your hips are kind of sticky, and by that all I mean is your thigh bone or your femur head doesn't glide really well in the joint, then that's when we start to get compression and pain and misalignment, and that can result as pain in the hip, in the knee, in the ankle, or in the low back. So taking a little bit of time before or after your workout, particularly if you're going to be doing a lot of lower body loading, like running or squatting, can be really, really beneficial. So all that you're going to need for the workout today is a foam roller, and that's just for one of the moves. The other two are just based on body weight, so you don't need any props at all. So I'm going to have you start with the roller. You're going to lie on your back, and you're going to set it up so the roller is just underneath your toes. Think about uh, taking a breath in. Exhale, softening the ribs towards the mat so you're already kind of stable in your core. And you're just going to start by pushing the feet out and then pulling them back in. And I always like to do this as a test before I go into the actual uh, hip mobility movement just because I'm really checking, can I stabilize between my ribs and my hips? But this alone will actually sort of help with that hip mobility because you're gliding your thigh bones in and out of the hip sockets. So if everything goes well here, you're going to pause. This time you're going to inhale, open the knees up. Exhale, slide the legs out, roll the feet parallel, and then bring it back in. So this just allows the hips to kind of start to stir in different directions. We'll go two more. Open, inhale. Exhale, slide out. Bring it back in. One more time. And then if you're like me, you sometimes have to adjust your roller because rollers move. So now we're going to reverse directions. This time you're going to inhale, slide out, exhale, roll around, and then bring the legs up and center. And again, as I'm kind of moving around uh, my hip joints, creating that glide, I'm still checking, can I keep my pelvis really still? So I'm not letting it arch off the mat. I'm just holding it really stable. Nicely done. All right, so for these next two moves, you're not going to need anything at all just your body. So what I want you to do now is come on to all fours. And this is called hand knee rocking. It's considered a primal motion. It's like the pre-crawling, if you will. Uh, and this also helps increase glide in the hips. It's a really nice squat prep too. So on this one, you're going to want your toes tucked under. You're going to lift your chin in the air, gently tuck it down to find length in the neck. And if you're prone to kind of being tucked in your pelvis, I want you to kind of reach your tailbone for the opposite wall, so you've got a little bit of length through the spine, a small low back curve, but not so much that you're sagging in your midline. And you're just going to exhale, sit back, and then inhale to come back up. Now, I'm just doing this with mostly, mostly parallel legs today, but you could also play with this with your legs turned a little in or turned a little out. What you want to be mindful of is your range. So if as you sit back, your booty kind of tucks under you, that sort of has lost the purpose of the hip glide. So really think tail feathers a little in the air, and you only get to go back as far as you can, keeping them in that position. And again, you could do this like eight or ten times. Nicely done. The last move we're going to do is called a tail wag. It just helps you get internal and external rotation of the hip while adding side bending of the spine. A lot of hip mobility goes with spinal mobility. So you'll lift one foot in the air. You'll swing that foot to the right, look over your right shoulder, breath in. And then exhale, swing your foot to the left, look over your left shoulder. And we're just going to do a few on this side. But again, if you're doing it in real time, you can do eight or even ten. Keeping the abdominals a little bit engaged. Finding that glide in your hip socket. And then you'd switch sides. Lifting the foot up, spin. And just notice if one side uh, kind of feels stuck in internal external rotation or if you get better side bending. It's always kind of interesting to notice how your two sides are different. Come back to center and rest. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, I'd invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put out new videos every week. Take care.